Hey everyone, today I've got a look at a free AI comic book graphic novel creator that has a ton of storytelling potential within it. Plus, I've got another free AI art generator that solves a problem that has plagued a lot of AI art tools. Trust me, you're gonna wanna check this one out. Okay, let's dive in. First up, we have Comic Factory by Julian Bilk. This is by far the coolest AI comic art generator that I have run across yet. Comic Factory is available over on Hugging Face and it is free to use. The model consists of a number of different styles. We have Japanese, Franco-Belgian, American Modern, American 1950s, Flying Saucer, Humanoid, Haddock, and Amoricon. The Japanese model has a relatively old school manga style, which you can see here. Here is another example of it, albeit in more of a modern context. Franco-Belgian is very much in the style of metal herlant or uh, heavy metal, as it might be known to you guys, uh, very much a Mobius-y kind of style. Mobius, of course, being Jean Girard, the legendary French artist who contributed to the films Alien, Tron, and The Fifth Element, but whose design style inspired countless other sci-fi movies. Another style is American Modern, which obviously has a very Marvel DC kind of superhero vibe to it. American 1950 has a very retro look to it, obviously, but I will say to me, this feels less accurate to that time period and more something that has been inspired by that era of comic book art. That said, the model Flying Saucer definitely has a much more accurate representation of those early comic books. Um, this very much reminded me of kind of an EC Comics vibe. So I generated a scene of a woman running away from a bunch of zombies, which seems very Tales from the Crypt to me. Humanoid seems to be sort of a modernized version of Franco-Belgian, as the name implies that it is based off of the publisher Humanoids, who I am a big fan of. Haddock seems to have a very Tintin-esque vibe to it, which makes sense because I think the name is definitely a reference to Captain Haddock. And finally, there is a Morricon, which to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what particular art style this is emulating. Perhaps someone with a art history degree can let me know in the comments below. As a quick note, I did want to jump in here to say that the channel has been hit with the dreaded YouTube invalid traffic bug. This has been an issue for many YouTube creators resulting in a significant amount of ad revenue loss. I've not seen any suspicious traffic in my YouTube analytics. In fact, hilariously, actually, YouTube says that my channel is getting the exact same amount of views as it usually does. And reaching out to YouTube support, they basically say, I wish there was a button to make it go away, but I don't have a button to make it go away. All of which is to say this has made the Patreon pretty important to the life of the channel. So if you like the work that I'm doing here and would like to see it continue, please do consider joining. All the videos that I post here are also posted there for members, and I am working on a number of bonuses as well. I am sorry this was a segment that I was hoping I would never have to make, but I do thank you for considering. The link is below. Hopping back over to the fun of Comic Factory, Julian has indicated that it runs on SDXL 1.0, four times, one for each panel, with 25 inference steps. It also upscales by two. We're gonna take a look at that in just a minute. Now, one thing to note is that the model is not generating fully narrative stories based off of prompts, but I do have a trick for that in just a minute. Also, the text does come in as that kind of garbled AI text, uh, but that's a pretty easy fix with Photoshop or any other image editor. But now let's dive into why I think that this is a pretty interesting way of putting a comic book together. Comic Factory works best when you give it shorter prompts, despite the fact that it initializes by asking for a story. Really, I think you're better off asking it for a scene. It really isn't in your interest to ask for very granular storytelling, but as we're about to see, I actually think that's one of its strengths. So taking the prompt, a cyber monk and his robot friend walk through a deserted spaceship with the humanoids model. It's a very humanoids-esque prompt. Um, we get this page, which is very lovely to look at, but doesn't really hold up as an actual narrative. We have our monk walking here. Suddenly our monk is inside the spaceship with his robot friend. Then he's uh, like in some kind of command bridge with some dude staring into the clouds. And then he's over in some bay with another robot. But I do say with this material, you can use kind of an AI version of the Marvel method to end up creating something pretty unique. The Marvel method is a comic book production style that was popularized by Stan Lee. It basically consisted of Stan writing a synopsis of what would happen in each issue and then handing that synopsis off to various artists such as Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko. 
Those artists would take the synopsis and then draw the entire comic book before handing it back to Lee, who would then write for the dialogue balloons and captions. To be fair, the method worked so well that Lee ended up firing all of the other writers on staff, and this definitely led to a major schism between Lee, Kirby, Dicko, and many of the other artists, considering that they never got storytelling credit for any of those classic stories. But that is a whole other video. But I do think that there is an interesting modified version of this that can yield some interesting story results. Uh, for example, taking a very basic story premise scene, which was this spaceman landing on a volcano planet, uh, Comic Factory generated up these images, which again, don't make a ton of sense. But by prompting the page three or four times and then slightly changing the scenario to move the story along, there was enough raw material there that I can begin cut and pasting out various panels and laying them into Photoshop. The end result after about 45 minutes of futzing around was two pages that I think work pretty well. On our opening page, we have a spaceship that goes into another establishing shot of a spaceship, the spaceship landing on a deserted planet with a close up of Space Guy, our hero. From there, Space Guy goes out in his rover buggy to explore the volcano planet. There's a speech balloon here that we could either remove or create some text for Space Guy to say, and then he runs across a giant Giger-esque ship. Uh, now, obviously, Space Guy will be going into that ship in the next page, and I'm pretty sure nothing good is going to happen. The end result was kind of a cut and paste job from the various other pages, uh, as you can see here. This was accomplished by taking panels that I liked from the original comic factory output and laying them in one by one in an order that made narrative sense. So as you generate pages in Comic Factory, uh, all you have to do to export them is head down to this print button, hit that, and save it as a PDF. Those pages will then be upscaled to a resolution of 2,321 by 3,068 at a DPI of 300, which is pretty solid. All in all, I'd say if you're trying to channel like your inner Alan Moore or you're working on your 400 page graphic novel opus, this might not be the tool for you. But if you're willing to kind of jam with the AI and treat it as a collaborator, I think that it's a really cool tool to freeform story tell and come up with some cool comics. The project is very new, so you know, be mindful of any sort of weird buggy things that end up happening. But Julian has said that he is going to be adding new models to Comic Factory soon. Again, it is completely free. You can find it at the link below. Next up, we have ideogram.ai. And it's kind of funny talking about this because one of the problems that I mentioned that Comic Factory has is that it can't do text and ideogram has solved that problem for AI image generations. Ideogram was created by a team of former Google Brain employees. And yeah, it is pretty good. From an AI image generation standpoint, let's take our old friend, the man in the blue business suit. Generated over in Mid Journey, this is just simply a man in a blue business suit, walks down a city street at an aspect ratio of 16.9. In Ideogram, by taking our man in the blue business suit prompt, um, you have three options for aspect ratios, vertical, square, and widescreen, and we'll use the 1610 aspect ratio here. Uh, and then from there, you actually have a number of different styles that you can choose from. So let's try um, cinematic, uh, and you can actually mix and match these as well. So cinematic photo, let's say, and generate from here to see what it looks like. So here we are, not bad. Uh, the one finger is a little bit on the long side, but you know, for the most part, yeah, this is, looks pretty solid. But the real superpower of Ideogram is the fact that you can prompt for text. Obviously, this has been a struggle for Midjourney. In this case, I tried to design a logo for a mountain apparel company called Peak Threads. And, you know, we kind of end up with Teacock Frauds over here, and then Teak over here, and Trey Pock over in that fourth one. Whereas Ideogram just gives us Peak Threads. And there are some very creative and cool things you can do with it. For example, this user who created a 3D render of a Kit Kat made out of Kit Kats. This one made me laugh, kind of a play on the famous Mulder poster in the X-Files. Here's a nice graphic design piece that was put together by someone. Here's a poster for my new tropical themed bar and grill. I will say while it is pretty solid, it is still going to run into problems here and there as all AI software does. Uh, for example, when I tried to get a logo for the channel, uh, theoretically came in as 
thuriacly. Uh, so it doesn't get things right all the time or it will just make things up as AI often does. Uh, I decided to try to put together a novel cover for the game I am playing 12 years too late, uh, Alan Wake by Remedy. Um, the book cover looks pretty good, but then it just decided to make up an author's name. So it is written apparently by Danka Mindy. For the record, I do think that Donka Mindy is a pretty cool name and should be a character name and maybe Alan Wake too. I think that Ideogram really shines as a tool for those of you who are looking to create custom logos, t-shirts, or stickers. Basically, it really flies with any task that you would say use Adobe Illustrator for. And while occasionally you are gonna run into some frustrating AI issues, uh, for example, muscular body with t-shirt with the text perfect and Ideogram just decided to put the hand over the P or just some misspelled words. For example, this was supposed to say the experimentalist. Uh, it comes out the experimentalist. I have found for the most part, it generally gets text right until you hit about the three syllable limit. So, you know, simpler words will probably yield better results for you. If anything, it's just worth stopping by because the community there is having a blast with text and there is some pretty hilarious generations there. But if you're looking for some quick and really good graphic design or logos, Ideogram is the place to be and it's free. I thank you for watching. And as mentioned before, here is a shout out to our current Patreon members. I hope to see your name there at some point in the future. My name is Tim.